with the notebook check tech reviews and now we've got the Huawei Mate 8 here. This is a six inch high end phone that scored 88% in our review. There's the score there, 88%, very good. And I can tell you, I've personally been testing this over the last couple of days. I've got a camera up here that I wanna do some uh, close in work with you. So unfortunately that's in the background, but I'm sure you'll appreciate the, uh, the close ups of the Mate 8. 88% is an excellent score. This is a high end device with a good screen and battery life, wow. Personally, I've only got one thing I think is wrong with this, and I'll put that at the end. Andreas Oshoff was a reviewer for this, and at the end of the video, we'll give you the pros and cons and the breakdown of the scores. But let's go into a little bit more detail of the Huawei Ascend Mate S, uh, sorry, Mate 8. So let's take a look at the specifications of the Huawei Mate 8 here. We've got the high silicon Kirin 950 here. It's uh, an eight core, uh, big little uh, processor, three gigs of RAM. High end stuff here, six inch display. It's not an AMOLED screen, it's an LC LED panel, IPS, full HD, but it's got a good brightness and a good contrast. I'll show you the, the details later. Networking, no problems there, up to AC, dual channel, LTE CAT6, no problem with that. And a huge battery, 4,000 milliamp hours, which until the start of MWC this week was pretty much the biggest battery you could get in a phablet. So 4,000 milliamp hours, well, I can tell you straight off that uh, I think for the average user, this is gonna be a two day device. You can run it down in around 10 hours, really hard usage. And we'll give you our test lab results from the battery uh, life test we did later on in this video. We've got a fingerprint reader on the back. It's a 360 degree uh, fingerprint reader. So that's quick, fast, and reliable. And uh, in fact, you'll see that same technology used on the recently announced uh, Huawei uh, Media Book, I think they called it, uh, MWC that was launched uh, yesterday. Right, um, let's get into some of the uh, figures on the display. So as I said, it's a six inch full HD uh, display, IPS technology, and there are some stats for you from our test. Have a look at that uh, brightness there, 514, and the black levels are down at 0.35, so you're getting an excellent uh, 1400 plus contrast there. So for outdoor usage, there should be absolutely no problems with this uh, with this screen. Color calibration wasn't perfect. We saw a 5.08 and a 5.49. Really good figures come in at the three mark, but it's acceptable to have uh, under five uh, on this device. You can adjust things like white balance on the screen and a certain amount of the color, uh, the color uh, accuracy anyway. Take a, look for a, take a look at the website for some comparisons, a comparison table, some information on um, RGB coverage uh, and also information on latency and uh, pulse width modulation. So really high quality all the way along, six inch uh, screen and obviously a two-handed style device. But as you can see there, you're able to bring down a left or right-handed minimized version so you can actually reach most of the screen uh, with your thumb. So that's a nice mode to have uh, when you're on the go and using it uh, with one hand. Really nice quality casing and uh, let's just have a look at the connectivity. There's the uh, USB and this is the only issue I might have with the uh, Mate 8 is that it's a USB 2 port, not a USB 3 port. It's not USB-C but I'm not too worried about that. It supports MHL and on the go as well so a fairly flexible port you got there. You got two grills at the bottom only one is the speaker and it's loud and it's reasonable up to about 70% uh, volume after that it starts to get a little bit uh, crackly. You've got Huawei's a combo micro SD card slot dual slim slot here so you've got one uh, micro SIM slot for uh, full 3G and 4G LTE capability. The second SIM card slot for th uh, 3G uh, GSM only. And if you don't want that dual SIM capability, you can pop a micro SD card in there to give you expandability. So pretty flexible on the dual SIM or micro SD uh, combinations. On the top, you've got the headphone port and there's three microphones here and Huawei have done a good job uh, of allowing and detecting where the sound is coming from from those three microphones. You will see in certainly things like the audio uh, recorder. You can see, uh, let's see if I can get that up for you here. Go to tools, go to the recorder 
and you will see that uh, if we put that start recording there, you will should be able to see where the uh, volume is coming from on that. Uh, there it is. It's coming from here. And uh, what you can do is tune the uh, speakers to point in the direction where you are or have it do doing automatic detection. There's the Huawei Mate 8 uh, sizing. I'm going to drop the 6 Plus, the Apple iPhone 6S Plus, slightly thicker, not quite as long, but very much the same size. And the Microsoft Lumia, Lumia 6 uh, 950XL, so it gives you a, an idea of the, the sizings. If you've held any of those phones in your hand, you get a good feeling of how big the Mate S is. For some more information on connectivity, Wi-Fi, GPS, GLONASS, and other uh, connectivity support, uh, take a look at the full review. We've got some more details on that for you there, and an extended set of specifications you can look through. We've done some tests on the camera uh, in the lab, and I've also done some testing at the weekend with the camera, including uh, HD video support, and I really like it. I like the very quick double click to shoot. That's shooting in uh, 1.5 seconds to start up. Again, let's do that again. 0.9 seconds to shoot there, and reshooting is very quick. Uh, so there's a nice bit of uh, quick focus on here. In our test results, uh, we did see some blurring towards the ed edge of our uh, test picture. Uh, but if for general people, and that includes myself, a camera phone fan, this is more than enough for day-to-day -day use. And I was very happy with the quality of the uh, stabilization, OIS included, on the, uh, on the full HD uh, camera capability. There's, a pl there's plenty of modes you can use here, but one of the nice ones is the professional mode, which gives you some nice uh, control over various uh, features here. And you've also got a very interesting uh, mode where you can actually set the uh, the position of the uh, brightness detection and the position of the focus for separate uh, uh, focus and uh, brightness detection. Again, more information in the full review. Uh, front cam, or sorry, the front facing cam, face facing cam, not that uh, uh, high end, but uh, certainly with those three um, microphones there should be pretty good for Skype usage. Let's have a look at some of the performance figures we got from our lab test results. Here you can see the Mate 8 against the S6 Edge Plus, beating it by 23%, or the, the S6 Edge is 23% slower. Uh, 6P also slower. The 6X Plus, uh, well, of course, nothing's beating that right now. That's uh, 50% faster than the Mate 8. But we're up at the high end in terms of performance there, certainly on Geekbench 3. 3D Mark 2003, well, the Huawei Mate 8 not coming in at the best in those uh, in that category there, uh, but certainly close to things like the Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. Now, the S7 has just been launched and the S7 Edge has just been launched. Um, we're expecting 20 to 40% more CPU and GPU power in that platform. So. As I speak to you today, uh, it's one of the best performing uh, platforms, but in about three or four weeks' time, it's going to get knocked down a notch from new generations of things like the uh, S7, the S7 Edge, and a couple of other phones that are launching. I've launched it to MWC and will be available uh, up during to the summer. For example, that HP uh, Envy Elite X3, which is using the Snapdragon 820. Take a look at the website uh, for more information, notebookcheck.net.com for the uh, German review. But uh, what I can say is that uh, we felt it was, well, I personally felt it was very fast, very fluid, very well connected. And uh, even on my uh, slow website here, it seems to be coming in. Well, that's probably the not the best. Uh, let's try notebookcheck.net because I know their website is well mobile optimized as opposed to mine. Uh, it's really coming up uh, quite quickly there. Let's take a look at uh, reviews here, and you should be able to see the Huawei Mate S, Mate 8 in our review there. Let's just bring that up, scroll through, and a uh, little bit of back, back lag there, but uh, very smooth, uh, considering that's a very big, big page loading there. In long-term tests uh, that I have did, I haven't noticed uh, any heat, any heat buildup here. So really nice uh, uh, 
cool phone and you'll see some tests uh, there our temperature tests didn't show up too much in terms of heat let's go down to the the maximum that we measured there 41 well, 42 with an average of 39.4 across the back that's really nothing to worry about Right, onto battery runtime. Well, there are three modes you can use this in. There's the standard uh, battery saving mode, there's the performance mode, and then there's ultra, battery ultra saving mode, which basically knocks it down to a, uh, a 2G or a GSM uh, mobile foam. And under that, you'll probably get it lasting. You don't have the screen on too much for, I would say about 10 days, actually. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't give you much uh, usage, but uh, if you're out and, around, uh, out and about and you want to get the best out of the last 10%, that's the mode you can use for SMS and voice capability. In general use, uh, I personally saw 10 to 12 hours under really full browsing usage, uh, app usage as well, and then when switched off, it really stays absolutely uh, very, very efficient. And there's a lot of things you can do. This is running Marshmallow. You could actually set apps to uh, stop running in standby. Uh, you can set apps to be turned off at certain points. There are notifications for apps that use high amounts of energy. So there's a lot you can do to, to optimize this. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of a look at uh, what I've had today on my battery usage. Let's go to, oops, let's go to advanced settings. And we'll go to battery manager and you'll see I've got 88% left today. And it was 100% on last night at uh, 7 p. No, at, uh, sorry, about 12 o'clock today. Uh, it's now uh, five hours uh, later. And uh, I've used about, uh, well, 12% there. And the projected use is that it's going to go all the way through tomorrow. Uh, until tomorrow, what it looks like tomorrow night, maybe even Wednesday morning, two o'clock at this rate. So excellent battery life. This is a phone if you're going to use it uh, for videos and for um, social media work, really long battery life. Those are our battery runtime figures. They're idle there, 31 hours. Uh, and that's what I'm seeing there, about 38 hours in idle with the screen off. This is with uh, minimum brightness and no Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi serving 14 hours and 25 seconds in our test, which is a page, a, a pause, a page load, a pause, a page. If you're really going for it, I say that will come down to around 12 hours. Big Buck Bunny H264 playback on a six inch screen at 1080p with that nice uh, color uh, and brightness. Well, this test runs it at 150 nits, 16 hours and three minutes. Wow, that is a long time for uh, H264 playback. And even under load, most devices coming in sort of the two hour mark. This is coming in at four hours and 16 minutes. Now there's a battery comparison table for you. And as you can see the Mate 8 uh, on the left hand side there beating, well, there's a lot of red there. One across that uh, line there, you'll see most devices coming in uh, well under the battery life of the Mate 8. If you've skipped forward to this part of the video, you're welcome. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the videos uh, to get yourself notifications of videos as we put them up. Uh, and we do encourage you to crowdsource um, timings for this video. Put them in the comments uh, below so that people can jump to various sections of the video uh, to get uh, detailed information. Uh, again, I'll encourage you, if you're gonna st skip through bits of the video, think about giving us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the videos. Pros and cons there, great dis uh, case, great display, good performance, good battery, dual SIM, <laughs> memory expansion via, uh, all the things you need, fast, accurate uh, fingerprint scanner, and no bloatware. Um, really, really good set of pros there. That's exactly what you wanna see. Cons? Well, five delta on the brightness, uh, sorry, on the grayscales and the color, not fantastic. Uh, the front camera, not fantastic either. High price, running at around 600 uh, euros at the moment. Uh, bear, bear in mind that the uh, S7 has just launched for 699, the S7 Edge 799. So uh, we might see that price coming down as well from uh, 600. GPS was average in our tests. Slight throttling under sustain low, but not much. And the con speaker, well, I'll add speaker under high uh, volumes, a little bit distorted there, above around 70%, but actually quite a nice sounding speaker at lower levels. 
So our editor and reviewer, Andreas Osthoff, has rounded up the scores such we've got an overall score of 88%, which is excellent. That's up there with some of the best devices we've tested uh, recently. You'll see the breakdown there. Keyboard, 100% uh, and certainly in my test. I did a 10 minute blog using WordPress on this in landscape mode and found it very accurate. The, sky, the, sorry, the swipe included uh, keyboard uh, seems to be pretty accurate. So there's a breakdown of the, uh, um, of the scores for you. Few minutes left just to show you what's in the box. Uh, not too much. It's your standard U micro USB package here. There's the uh, white uh, charger. You'll get a cable uh, as well. A pair of headsets, which I don't have information uh, for you on. And there's the uh, uh, SIM card removal tool, which we can actually show you right now. Let's uh, show you that micro SD dual SIM combo slot there. Now I'm just going to show you that. There is a mi uh, micro SIM, or sorry, a nano SIM there, and there is a micro SD card, but you can actually, let's take that out and plop another uh, nano SIM in there if you want dual SIM capability. Let's just take you through a couple of the uh, menu systems here that certainly go, uh, sorry, certainly go to about phone and show you that we're running uh, version 4 of Imui, the uh, user interface for uh, Huawei devices. There is no app drawer, it's all the apps are in the home screens, um, which is slightly different to other configurations, but I found that uh, quite usable. Uh, back to the settings, and you'll see we're running um, Android version as 6.0 here. Personal opinion on the Mate 8, I really like it. I actually liked the Mate S a lot uh, when I tested that about November last year. Um, I really like the Xperia Z5 Premium, uh, but I think I like the Mate 8 the best out of those devices. Um, this, is, this is a phablet, this is an air mobile internet device, six inch screen. I just wanna show you something from 2006 that I spent a lot of time with in my early blogging days. Ten years ago, there's a seven-inch screen Windows mobile device. Um, well, the differences are absolutely incredible here. Um, this was a 1,200 euro bit of kit and uh, 800 by 480 resolution with it didn't even have a capacitive touchscreen. And you think about that progress. And in terms of mobile internet devices, um, the fact that you've got Microsoft Office Mobile on here, you've got HDMI out, you've got USB on the go, you've got full disk encryption, you've got some fantastic connectivity features. Uh, it's absolutely stunning how far we've come in terms of uh, mobile internet devices. That's just my personal opinion. I encourage you to go and have a look at the full review at notebookcheck.net, notebookcheck.com for the German version, and I also encourage you to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video, and we'll see you on the next Notebook Check Tech Review. Thank you.